Now we're recording. Hi team. Okay, go ahead and warm it up. If you need to do your jumping jacks today because you're in freezing somewhere, go right ahead. Pull your elbows back, sit yourself back, keep pulling your elbows back as you go. Relax to come forward. I love my jumping jackers, excellent. We'll take a minute here to warm it up. Yes. I want you to start to engage your lower rib cage up into your body slightly so that you feel connected through the whole torso. So feel link through your torso, through your arms and through your legs. So you're just thinking of the whole situation, your whole bod, how it comes together, how this tension, compression and suspension mechanism of the fascia makes us have a form, a body, allows us to have a form. Cool, let's bring our elbows a little bit closer together and then same thing, but rocking right and left slightly on the diagonal. Elbows pull back the whole time. Looking good team, so great. Yes, yes, yes. As you go back on your diagonal, your knees are a little wider for a bigger base. Give your hips a little bit of sass, right and left. So I'm pulling, as I go back on my right, I'm pulling my right hip back and starting to track that into my lower back area. And as we go, I'm gonna just feed you a little bit of anatomy information. It's interesting because we're always taught that the muscles and the bones set up our structure if we're thinking about posture today. But it's actually the fascia, like I said, using compression, tension, and suspension holding us up. If we didn't have the fascia, our bones, our skins, and our muscles would just flop to the floor like a little pile <laughs> or, a, or a deflated wetsuit. <laughs> the fascia inflates our wetsuit for us. Come on to your booty and flip around. Take a break from that. Pull your hands in towards your booty and lift your heart up. So the resistance here is the hands pulling forward. You're engaging in the front of your shoulder head. Keep pulling your hands forward as you lift your heart up nice and slow. It doesn't matter how far we go. You want to inch into this one. It can be a very delicate tissue in the front of the shoulder head, lifting yourself up. Soften back down, let your heart come down. Keep pulling your hands forward. Amazing. There's Steve and Alice. Cuties. Let's go for two more. And then we're going to cross our shins in front of us today. One in front of the other. Notice which one's in front. And then as you go, you're going to lift your pelvis up, pressing down through your shins. If you're not ready for that, feet back here or extend your legs out in front of you. Let's go for two more on this first side. Opening and spreading wide at the front of the pelvis. And then you're gonna change sides, other leg on top when you're ready. Next three here on second side. Yeah, pulling your hands forward, lifting your pelvis up. Cool, last one, pulling hands forward the whole time and lowering your pelvis down. Flip back up onto your hands and knees, tabletop. Tuck your toes, find that low belly zone so that you have a little motor action between your belly button and your pubic bone. Soften through your elbows, look forward if you can. Your shoulder heads are going wide to the side. And then use your booty to take you up and back, that little motor spot you found at your lower gut. Inhale, lift up onto your toes. And exhale, roll out to your plank. Measure out if you need to adjust. Bend your elbows again, bend your knees to hover, pulling your low belly up. So a lot of us know that having a strong abdominal wall, having our interior abdominals nice and supportive create a stacked spine, but we also sometimes have to ixnay dense fascia in order to create the posture that we want because if the fascia is what holds the bones into place. The fascia is determining how our bones stack. The bones determine our posture, right? Lift up onto your toes, pull yourself forward one more plank. So it's good for us to strengthen our core body. 
but we're also going to work on hover your knees on changing the fascia so it changes the setup of the pelvis the setup of the pelvis changes the stack of the spine paw through your heels just find your calves for a moment let your heads go let your faces go jaw wide to the side eyeball eyeballs wide to the side one more inhale here, soften through your knees like you're going to pounce and spring forward, booty goes back, heart goes towards your thumbs, and then hop or step to your hands. Relax and hang forward, check out your hamstrings right now. Back of the neck is open and then slowly stack up to stand. You're not going to see me, trust yourself. You're just rolling up to stand. Plant your feet once you're there, stack your spine. Check out how you're standing right now before you get too far in the game. You can bend your knees and take a bounce. Feeling the tailbone drop between your heels as if it could. And then plant down through your feet to stand up again. Feeling the pelvis long and the rib cage over the hips, the shoulders over, over the rib cage. Scope it out, what you got? Cool. Mental note, have it handy for a little fun analytical comparison at the end. Step your right knee back and we'll go into your hamstring. So let's see if you need a cushion, grab that now, blanket or pillow underneath your right knee. Pull your left heel back and blocks are handy here if you got them. As you sit yourself back, you move towards PE stretch and then relax to come forward. If you're new to class, welcome. We never hold things. <laughs> so we're gonna pulse this out. You're pulling your heel back the whole time. Everybody looking good to activate the fascia as you elongate your hips backwards. You're gently yanking on that tissue to create the change, to create more elasticity in this area. And yet, yes, less yank on the bones. So we're aiming towards creating that more a suspensive kind of fascia instead of compressive. I'm checking you out. Very nice, everybody. So imagine when the fascia gets tight, it tourniquets our, our muscles and smushes on our bone. So imagine your tissue getting more elastic, more springy. That's allowing the bones to go into their neutral position where they actually want to be. Beautiful, Sharon. So good. Nice, everybody. Phil, great. I love the blocks. Who's got those? Brenna, nice blocks today. Good, Ellen. Great, Heather. Everybody fab. Kailito, so good. Joanne, awesome. Yay. Yay, yay, yay. Okay, five million more. Start to rotate your foot external or internal. Check out what you need today. Is Joy here too? And I can't see her. And Sandrine's here today. I'm so excited. Okay, external or internal for five, 10 more. Let's see what we got here. We're like 10 more, Bond, don't make me do it. Just to put your mind in the back of your leg for the last few, you can. And then imagine that tissue getting nice and springy allowing the bones to float. They actually do float, huh? But when the fascia gets denser and denser, it can smush the spaces that they're supposed to have space in between, it smushes the spaces more. So we're kind of creating more space between the bones as we floss our fascia. Okay, I think that's good, huh? That's a good warm up. Guess what? It's not your last hamstring of the day. Back to tabletop shape if you're new. Left leg goes straight up to the side for your liver floss. Imagine that your left arch of your foot is hugging towards the center line like a squeegee. Tuck your back toes and sit your booty back. So we have our left leg out if you're interested, if you weren't sure. I'm never sure, right and left. You want to squeeze your adductors together as you sit your booty back in space. Make sure your shoulders are pulling away from your ears and that is going to power up your low belly to pull you back in space. Keep squeezing your adductors. You got it. Yes, team. Love. Good. Ashley, take the hyperextension out of your elbows, lovey. There you go. Always protecting joints. That's for everybody, hey? 
Squeezing in, keep squeezing. You've got it. Mm -hmm. These adductors that we're working on pull our legs into internal rotation. So if you have a duck walk like me, that means my adductors aren't pulling my upper thigh bones into internal. That's gonna affect my posture and create more of a flexion in my lower back. So uh, my booty going back for more of a C curve in the low back, which actually compresses the spine. So as I floss my liver channel out, my leg bone, the femur head in the hip joint is gonna go more neutral and allow my pelvis to extend instead of being flexed this way. It's gonna extend for length in the lower back. We still wanna have that curve, but we don't want it so much that it compresses the lower back, okay? That makes sense. Okay, was that enough liver or what? Tuck your right toes, send your left leg straight up behind you, one-legged dog. Bend the knee, open the hip if you're ready for that. Plug your right foot into the floor, plug your left hand into the floor, soften your elbows, let your shoulders come around your rib cage. Open your hip if you can, squeeze your knee towards your nose, small ball shape hovering over your wrist if that's okay for your bod. Keep squeezing into your left psoas, knee goes up and back behind you, happy dog again. One more time, hugging in, squeezing in. Keep squeezing, stay connected to the left so as the whole time keep plugging your right foot down and basta, walk your heels out. And then swoop your left knee forward, it's pigeon. If you're not ready for pigeon, flip onto your back, it's number four stretch. Blocks right here for you, plug your front knee into the floor activate your left glute. Keep plugging with your right uh, left knee and dip your heart. You can interlace your hands behind your back if you want to do that. We have a few rounds of pigeon here. If you need to, add a little sass over to the left. If you feel like you need to go deeper or you're not accessing the sensation yet in the left hip, you can slide your booty left just a smidge, open the space between your glutes. You're kind of spreading your glutes that way and getting to a different layer of fascia. Your knee is aiming to be in front of your left hip, your left knee in front of your left hip. Great choice, Kyle. That's right, Katie. Yeah, changing that slightly. Exactly. Great, Jen. Beautiful. Hi, Colleeny. Yay, yay, yay. The whole team's here. So fun. Go, go, go with your gallbladders, changing that pelvic girdle. Yes. Again, this tissue here, when it's too dense, can create too much internal rotation at the top of the hip joint. So creating more neutrality on the outside of your pelvis is going to allow your pelvis to set up in a more neutral way. The more neutral your pelvis is, the more space between your vertebrae, you're going to get a natural stack instead of folding yourself up. Okay, last three. You can do it. Give yourself a peek to the left if you haven't already. Little peek of the left, a little more sass out to the left with your left hip. Last one. Tuck your right toes, send it back its plank for just a moment, I promise. Bend your knees, full cover, you can do it. And then let your knees come all the way down to the ground, lower slowly to your belly. Super slow. Slow your roll, people. Tuck your fingertips, elbows like eagles, off your mat, nice and wide. Inhale, lift up, little floss for your chest. This is your break moment, enjoy a little chest opening here. Inhale to lift up. As you pull your belly in, and your pubic bone forward slightly. Can you sense any length in your right pelvis area in the back of the pelvis? As I arch up, I have a little more space on my left side since we floss that side. I don't know about you. Your last two, you get to peek above your elbow and your nose, your shoulder and your nose, whatever body parts are called. 
whatever they're called. Yeah, go right and left. Since I messed that up, do one more step. Chest in, looking opposite direction. You got it. Beautiful. So nice. Tuck your toes downward dog. One more time. Walk it out. Amazing. And then your left knee is coming down. Your right leg is coming forward. Here you go. Classic hammy stretch. Let's find that second side. Heel pulls back. Hands on your blocks, please, if you need them. Keep pulling your heel back and sit yourself back. Amazing. Do we need any help here? I kind of want to let you do this side as I give you just a quick postural tutorial on how the spine setup happens. Yeah, keep going, right? Just hang in there with your hamstrings. You can listen and be distracted as you change your tissue. So here you go. A lot of us have pelvises that go this way. That's a flexed pelvis. Some of us have hyperextended pelvi that go this way. That means your hamstrings are stuck short. Do you see that? This way our hamstrings are stuck long. Either way, we're compressing our spine this way. If I'm stuck this way, then it uh, pitches me forward, and then I have to pull my shoulders back. That causes even more here, and you get like a little dowager hump around the thoracic. That also causes a forward neck, then you have to pull your neck backwards in space. So if we change the hamstrings, we floss these so that pulls the pelvis into neutrality. You get space in the lower back and the sacrum is stacking underneath the cranium as it's supposed to. Capiche? Does that make sense? If we're this way, it pulls the chest forward. Same thing, you have to go back that crunches this and it's not great. So we're gonna pull this back into neutral, same stacking happens. So there you go. Did you do external, internal with your front leg? Yeah, was that helpful to see that visual of how changing the hamstrings can change the spine? Yeah, it's helpful, right? It's kind of fun. A lot of you know that already. So sorry if you have to hear me say it a million times again. <laughs> But it's, it's a good reminder that what we're doing, we're actually after some results are available to us if we want them. Vaughn, a quick question. When oh. you're doing this um, on one of these hammy switches, what's the length of time you use? Like, is it two minutes, three minutes if I did it by myself? Great question, Sharon. Like, are you setting for a certain Oh, what was that? And then last I have another question. Like when you're, I have a mirror. But are your pel are your hip bones supposed to be level across when you go back? Like oh. level, or is one hip supposed to be higher or lower? Because like we're talking about spinal alignment. Uh -huh. So I think it, like you said, it. I think you said this. It starts in the pelvis. So when we're doing this hammy exercise, that's a good time to level the pelvis if that's important in that exercise. This is a great question. This is an amazing question because it leads to many avenues. Okay, but first let's transition to our liver stretch so we're not doing hamstrings all day long. Okay, first let's go with the second question first. We are talking about changing tissue here. So while we're doing our flossing, I personally am not interested in what your shape is, whether your pelvis is level, whether you're you know, holding your posture correctly. I might give you some clues so you can access the tissue in a different way, but changing the tissue is not holding a posture. In other words, we're trying to change the tissue so that you're organically and naturally in your neutral posture. So if I need to shift my pelvis like this, some crazy weird thing in order to access the zone or the tight spot that I need to change, awesome. We are not about, you know, it's not Iyengar in the sense that getting peculiar about the positioning and the architecture is gonna change the tissue necessarily. I don't think it does. 
I think it did the opposite for my body when I was more peculiar about getting postures exactly right. It actually created more scar tissue in my body, forcing myself into someone else's shape or an idea of what the shape was supposed to be. So me changing my tissue like this, whatever I gotta do to get groovy into the zone that I need to change, that's where the juice is. It's such a great question, Sharon. I hope I answered it. Second question, how many flosses do I do a day? <laughs> I know we used to do a hundred hamstrings on each leg. It would take us about 20 minutes, 20 minutes to a half an hour depending. So you can't, once you kind of feel comfortable with it and it's not wearing you out or making you really sore anymore, you can do quite a few. But I also think there's the right amount for each person. So it's a self exploratory process. Tuck your left toes, send your leg up and back. You get to happy baby it. Shake it around, move it around, do all your fancy stuff. This is why I never tell you, you know, do exactly what I'm doing or I give you precise patterns um, to look at in your body. I'm like, swoop your leg around, shift your hips, do a dance. I don't care. Whatever feels really good, that's what your body wants. This is about, uh, it's a listening game, figuring out what our body needs, etc. We got to squeeze our knee to our nose and do two hip flexors. Knee goes up and back, happy dog. Squeezing in, hugging in, keep hugging in. So yeah, I, I didn't really answer your question in the sense that do two minutes, do two minutes, do five minutes. See what you got to do for yourself. Knee comes forward. Here's your pigeon shape. Plug down with your front knee and then dip your chest forward. Let's pulse this out. So good. Yeah. Really great, everybody. I mean, if you got up and did 10 hamstrings on each leg, you'd be, that'd be killer. That'd be amazing. Yeah, that would take you like 30 seconds, right? You know how many hamstrings I make you do in one class? We're here for 45 minutes. So yeah, maybe one week if you guys wanna play, we'll all just tell each other 10 hamstrings in the morning and we can see what happens. We'll do a little group experiment together. Then we can add on if we wanna do 20 in a couple weeks later, let's see what happens. Cool, you have a peekaboo to the right. You're shifting your pelvis over to the right just a little bit, getting a little deeper into that outer hip girdle. So good team, I love it. Good, you have two more, let's say two more. You're almost there. Nicely done. Tuck your back toes, send your leg. You have a straight out to plank. Pull your hands backwards. Keep your toes tucked if it's okay for your lower back or untuck them. Keep pulling hands backward. Pull your pubic bone forward, forward, forward. Spread your collarbone, little up dog shape-ish. Keep squeezing your psoas, hugging into the guts. Last inhale. Let your knees lower down, peek down at the floor with your chest, and then booty goes back, downward dog. Walk your heels out, let your head go, ears open sideways. Mm -hmm. Walk little walks to your feet, and then stack your spine to stand. Let's take an easy side stretch, just interlace your hands above your head, rocking side to side. Nothing too special, just loosening up the side body. As you go side to side, you're plugging your feet down and your knees are not locked. Yeah. Hands behind your head, interlace, plug your head back, pull your hands forward. You can't see me, trust yourself. Hands are behind your head, your head's going back, your hands are coming forward. And then slowly curl your chin in towards your chest. Your head drags, your hands drag your head down to the floor. Nice and slow. Let's pop our feet wide to the side and do a little ninja for a moment, squeezing with adductors. We have one more set on our inner legs here. 
Hands can be on the ground or hands on your hips. Booty goes back as you sit your booty back, you're hunting for that inner thigh line. So yeah, here's a good chance to shift your pelvis any which way you need to. I'm, un I'm having you unlearn the squareness of the pelvis. <laughs> that way when you go to sit or you go to do your other postures and other classes or your personal practice, your pelvis is gonna naturally neutralize. It will be more even in those shapes that you're making. What a deal. The dancers in the room know what I'm talking about. If you go to bar, you're like, oh, I have a more neutral pelvis without having to force myself into the shape I'm supposed to make. Yeah, we get that, right? We're holding ourselves in a specific position our whole lives and then to find that you could stand at bar and already be there without holding it there. That's the whole point of flossing, that you're already there without having to hold yourself there. Yeah, when you're sitting working at home, you're naturally just sitting there because your body is more neutral. Yeah. Last three, please, squeezing inner thighs together until you're even, nice and yummy, opening the lower groin. Mm-hmm. Upper groin opens too, pelvic floor is nice and wide, easy does it unwinding the tissue that kind of grips the pelvic floor. That tissue that is around that zone, right? We're unwinding that. Okie dokie, I'm gonna scooch us onto our back, so transition how you want. Grab your block or grab a chair today. A chair would be handy, you don't need it, or a wall. You don't need it, your foot can still be on the floor, but I'm gonna teach it this way. I'm going to have my left foot on the floor on my chair. My right foot's coming across. Make sure your butt isn't too close to your wall or your block. So you want not an exactly 90 degrees with this left leg. You want a little space. It makes it easier. Cross your right leg over so that you're in your almost number four shape and bring your hands to the outside of your knee. Very nicely done. Kick out with your knee, please. And then you're gonna drag your knee towards your heart. You just did a lot of work here. So you get to be on your back for a moment. Give this a second because we're working the glute tissue here that leads to the lower back. So I'm hoping that we can de decompress our lower spine as we use this exercise. There may not be a lot of sensation at first, so hang in there. This is a time that you can feel like your pelvis is rooting into the ground, if that helps you feel kind of anchored. I'm almost imagining the bottom of my sacral plate kind of dipping forward towards my chair or my wall, whatever you have there. Kicking out with your knee, keep kicking out and dragging in. Take your time to find this. Yeah. You got it, it looks great. Hands are on the outside of the knee. If you need this again, the knee plugs to the outside and then you drag yourself in. Hopefully it's starting to light up now. Maybe you're gaining a smidge of sensation. Very good. Okay, if you want to add on, I don't want this to confuse you, but this is a little bonus. Left foot, walk it to the left two inches if you have somewhere to place it. Walk it to the left two inches, and I want you to let your pelvis lean a little bit left. So it's almost like you're going to do a twist to the left. You're just leaning a little bit left and getting a different aspect of the tissue. Again, we're trying to decompress any congestion here that we have along the lower, uh, <laughs> the back of the leg, excuse me, the back of the leg, that's gonna shift how our pelvis sets up, neutral, flexed, or tucked. We're heading towards neutral. We're driving on the highway towards the town of neutral. Population 20, something, however many people are in class. <laughs> That's who's in the van. Okay, we have two more of these. 
And then you can hop your foot back toward your base foot back towards neutral if you want, and then squeeze your knee in towards your chest and press your leg away, releasing the front of the pelvis now. Yeah. So when we get rid of that tension in the back of the pelvis, the front of the pelvis easily falls into place. You have that natural lift in the front of your legs when you're standing. You know, when we're so tight, we feel kind of hunched over, like the hip flexors are pulling us forward. They're actually gripping and trying to hold us straight up and down, but the back body is so tense that it's forcing the body forward from that flex, if you have a flex pelvis, yeah. I can show you visually after class if you wanna see what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying though, when these guys get so crunchy that it seems like it's pulling you forward, it's actually the back body pitching your torso forward and these are just trying to hang on. Okay, let's go five more on this side. Very nice. Good, and let's put our right foot on the ground if you can. Oh, left foot on the ground. Sorry, don't listen to me today. Send your right leg to the sky, hold behind your right knee pit. Kick up to the sky, let's just do six quads. We just have six today. Nice and slow, nice and sweet, nice and juicy, engaged, connected. Yeah. Isn't it kind of nice that you don't have to do this in a very particular way? We can practice doing those particulars in other practices, which is also a good toolkit. But it's kind of fun to be a little bit more uh, instinctual. Okay, that was probably six. I like it. Now you can put your left foot down again, right foot to the sky. Just kick down with your heel like you're gonna do your slice and dice and drag in for four. Keep kicking away with your heel and two. And one, let's go two more, it feels kind of sweet. Mm -hmm. You can imagine your spine getting longer and longer as you change your hamstrings, sensing that spine on the floor. Yeah, cool, send that leg nice and long out of the hip. You can just pat the front hip flexors. That was a lot of flexion. Take that leg over. You can bend it. Nice, easy twist. Opening the right arm out to the side. And then if you want, this is a diagonal stretch. You're sending your right toes on the left diagonal and your right fingertips on the right diagonal. So you're making a straight line. Toes to your fingertips, all the way through the torso, nice big diagonal. Yeah, very nice. Relax to come back towards neutral. And then just take a butterfly to check out your pelvis for a moment. And then other side, popping your right foot up. You have your left leg cross, hands on the outside of your knee, kick out the, uh, your knee to the side, keep kicking out and dragging in. Mm-hmm. Knee is plugging out, keep plugging out and pulsing that. I'm gonna peek at you on the second side. Hands are on the outside of your knee. You're dragging your knee in. Beautifully done. Mm-hmm. Great, Liliana, nice. Good, everybody. Mm-hmm. Yes, Ariana, great. Ashley, great. Ani, everybody. Bernie, you're so dark today. I can't see you, but I know you're there. Simone, so fab. Yes, Joanne, so good. Mm -hmm. It's kind of fun to put your foot a little higher on something, right? Have you guys tried that version before? Sharon, pop your um, arch of your foot on the edge of the chair and give yourself a little more leverage. Yes, right there. Uh-huh. Just gives you a little more connect. Yes. Good, Kim. Love. Okay, you're gonna do your little slight rotation. 
So now you're scooching your right foot to the right two inches, letting your legs lean over slightly right, getting a little deeper into the pelvis. Oh yeah. Fun to know that our bones float as well. So if you think of a tent, the poles aren't actually touching each other, right? They interface with the, the, the canvas of the tent or the strings, etc. Our bodies are kind of like that too. There's space between the bones, even though the connective tissue is connecting everything. Does that mean I have a, a chat? Did someone ask a question? No. Okay. I don't know what that sound is. Keep going. You have six more on this side. And as that fascia loosens up, you can imagine like the strings holding the tent poles getting a little bit more springy and loose. That means the bones aren't getting smushed together as much. When, that, when the bones have that kind of suspension because the fascia has a little bit more lift, you're standing up straighter and easier. Okay, that was good. Squeeze your knee in this time. Come back to neutral with your legs and then plug your knee out. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. Keep squeezing in with your knee. Have a few more. Imagine your, the back of your neck getting longer and longer here as your knee pushes out to the side. Very good, very good. Let's go for 10 more. 10 more on this side. Nice and easy, replenishing your kidneys here. Very cool. Last five. All right, sending your legs straight to the sky, left leg up, hands behind your left knee pit, right foot comes on top of your left, kick up with your left and right foot plugs you down. Quad. Let's go for our six here. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Very good. Send your left leg to the sky, right foot down, kicking out with your heel, down and away from you, and then dragging in for a couple pulses, nice and easy. You did all that hamstring prep in this one, really helps us get deeper into the hamstring. The knee can always be bent. You're not locking your knee ever, ever. And that's your last two. And one. Very cool. We get to swoop ourselves. Oh, take your twist. Nice, easy twist. Can't forget the twist. And then when you're ready, it's a diagonal pull, right toes. Left toes long, left fingers up. I'm sorry for my right and left today. I don't know where my logical brain went somewhere else. Nice long stretch between your toes and fingers. Very cool. Rock yourselves up when you're ready. We're gonna work our right leg first. We're gonna pop up into a pyramid. Hands can be on your stool or on the floor, on your blocks, your choice. Right leg forward, please. You're almost there. Here's your big push to the end of class. Your heel pulls back, sit yourself back. Here we go, sitting into your back knee. You got it. Phil, do you have a rocking chair there? <laughs> That's pretty chair. Okay, cool. You've got just a couple more minutes left, so hang out with your hamstrings here. We're sensing that tissue that travels from the head down the spine. So now you're linking up with the whole structure. You got the whole structure in mind as you work your hammies. Five million more. Then you're gonna go sit in your chair where you work from home and see if it changed. Mm -hmm. 
Good, everybody. So good. Keep it cranking and around the world with your back leg. Yes, Katie. Mm hmm good Lily. Good Sharon, everybody good. Yes, Alice, don't lock your elbows. Mm hmm you got it. Playing with your calf, you can be up on your heel like Ashley, or you can let your foot come down. Your choice. Back foot's hopping around the world, you're almost there. Here's your big moment, big hammy moment. Let's hang out with our legs crisscross and feel through the IT band here. Oh yeah. You got three more on this side. So pick your poison. I'm gonna stay in crisscross. You can head to neutral if you want. Last one. All right, pop yourself into warrior three, whatever you gotta do to get there. Hands up on a ledge if you need it. We're gonna bend and tap. Here we go, bend and tap, plug down, to stand up. Bend and tap, plug down. Plugging down to lift your back leg. Find the hydraulics, find the pelvic leg connection. Plugging down to lift up. You have two more, you can. You can, you can, I'm telling it to myself too. Last one. Place your feet hip distance and then stack yourself to stand. Oh yeah. Right leg has more extension in the pelvis, meaning the tailbone on the right side feels like it's dropping down. The femur heads up in the hip. Socket a bit better. Let's trade sides when you've checked it out. Whenever you're ready, take your time. And pyramid second round. You're almost there. You're almost there. Shoulders are easy out of your ears. Your jaw is wide. You can notice your face. We want to check that out like we did last week. Noticing the tension, but not trying to change it. Not only when we work our hamstrings is it changing the pelvis, but it's also changing the rotation of the upper and the lower leg. That's gonna change our posture as well. When we plant our foot in a neutral and then we force the rest of the leg to kind of uh, spiral so that that shape can work. It can actually cause torque between the bones. So we're trying to unwind the torque right now as we floss our hammy. Unwinding the torque so the bones can stack in a way that's more comfortable, more neutral, and alleviates the compression in the spine. How about around the world if you haven't yet? We're getting there, we're getting really close. Hang out in your crisscross if you can. You can do it. We're almost there. Yes, yes, yes. You have three more, that's it. Big posture day, big lower leg day. You guessed it on Thursday, we're gonna switch to upper body. We have to do the root first. Okay, you're into your warrior three. When you're ready, lift your back leg up. Bend and tap, plug down to lift up. You got it, plugging down and lifting up. Just a few more. You know me, always make us start with the what I think is most often the root cause. And definitely for posture, you can find it in the lower body. That's the setup of the spine. Then we're gonna fine tune the upper body. Let's go for two more, you can. Plugging down to lift up. Plugging down to lift up. All right, release your foot down, tuck your tailbone under a smidge and then stack yourself to stand. Let yourself be in full neutral, scoping out your posture. I'm gonna give you a minute here. Just plug down with your feet, soften through your knees, just a micro bit. 
I'm gonna see how you're doing there. Just standing. Great. How does your tailbone hang? Where are your shoulders in space? Would you like them to be somewhere else? You can take note of that too. Uh-huh. Very cool. Okay, team, amazing work. Do you wanna know one acupressure point for um, stacking posture? It's a quickie. You find your waistline and you go right to your kidneys. This guy here is the zipper upper. Just plugging right at your waistline, wherever you find your waistline, and then right on either side of the spine, right there. It's bladder 23, and that helps us stand up straight. So you can do that one later when you're sitting at your desk. Just pop your thumbs in there for a minute, 30 seconds. Excuse me. Okay, do me a favor. Your homework is to go sit in a chair right now and see if you notice any changes. Okay, my loves, have a great day. I'll see you on Thursday for upper body posture. Fabulous work. Let me know if you have questions. Thanks, Sharon, for your question. I loved it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Love you guys. See you Thursday. Challenge starts March 8th. Right? That's what I said. Okay. Bye, Sandrine. Kisses. Love you. You know what time you're doing the challenge? I'll do our regular time. 12.15? Yeah. Okay. All week long. Thanks, Don. Thanks, Sonny. See ya. Have fun. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Aaron. Bye. Bye, everybody. Kisses. Good to see you. I miss you, Sandrine. Oh, bye-bye.